Uh, Sandeep Parekh, founder of Finsec Law Advisors, is with us, as mentioned. And uh, Sandeep, let's talk about the IBC review and the panel recommendations looking to widen the pool of bidders for insolvent companies. What kind of, uh, uh, what would be your assessment on this kind of a step? Uh, because, uh, you know, the report suggests that narrowing, they've narrowed down the list of the debarred entities um, uh, to only those that are closely related to the defaulting promoters. So I think, um, uh, obviously, you know, the ordinance and then uh, the amendment uh, narrowing the uh, the kind of widows to exclude people who are related in some way to uh, defaulting entities, other defaulting entities, I think was a move in the right direction. Only issue was, you know, the devil is in the details. So um, I think the way it is drafted will probably have to be relooked at some point uh, or at least be interpreted to uh, exclude genuine uh, uh, defaulters and, you know, kind of related parties, but not at the same time uh, exclude every remote connection to a, a default entity, including shareholdings. So I think they'll have to uh, look at it uh, a little bit, little bit afresh and come out with some clarifications to say this is what is the intent of the law and uh, this is how we wish to clarify uh, the provisions uh, in, in the amended act. Sandeep, I just wanted to understand that all these measures that have come in, once they are implemented or select of them are implemented, you think it will make uh, this particular process much faster and better? So well, the, all the things which came out yesterday, I, I don't think uh, there any, any of the recommendations actually geared towards speed. Uh, they're kind of more geared towards uh, one clarifications and number two, uh, several kind of uh, substantive changes in terms of who's qualified, etc. So uh, all, all, I, I don't think a single uh, um, of those, those amendments or clarifications is geared, actually geared towards speed. I think the speed has already been provided for in the main act itself, which is 180 days or 270 days. Uh, so I, uh, that's, that's my view. Sandeep, uh, you know, specifically on the panel's recommendation on the income, uh, interim uh, finance uh, states that interest should be calculated till one year after the liquidation date or the repayment, whichever is earlier. Um, do you think that this will really help banks and ARCs extend the interim finance to companies that are undergoing the bankruptcy process without the fear of losing out on interest? How much of a, uh, of a boost or uh, how much do you think this will aid in this process? Mm -hmm. I think this will this will only make an impact in marginal cases, really. You know, when you're looking at liquidated companies, there's usually uh, there's a substantial haircut on the principal. So you know, uh, question of interest is quite remote in most cases. Uh, so it'll, it'll, it'll probably in very very few number of cases. Right. Uh, also, can you just tell us that you know what is your initial reading on the entire thing? Uh, do you think that these changes were needed because it was a first time implementation and that's why, uh, you know, certain problems or certain issues were bound to happen? Yeah, so in fact, most of them I, I find uh, kind of somewhat clarificatory and some, some of them are substantive as well. But I think, these, you know, this is something which, is, uh, which has been not uh, fully tested. You know, it's a new law and, you know, 12 cases are referred uh, into this process. So I think there's a lot of learning for everybody the uh, lenders, borrowers, bidders, the government and the regulators. I think uh, this is bound to happen and I'm sure we'll keep seeing uh, more incremental uh, tiny changes uh, over the next several m months, if not se several years, uh, which also just probably improve the process. Right. Can you also just tell us that there's one point in, in that which says that panel has also exempted pure play financial entities from the scope of Section 29A. What does this mean? No, so um, my understanding so from a limited uh, reading is they, they, um, the whole concept of financial firms, obviously, you know, financial firms have uh, investments in various entities. So the, the idea of them becoming defaulters by association should not apply to them because it's, it's their job to kind of um, buy, buy uh, many of these companies which are in stress situations. So I think, again, it's kind of clarificatory in nature and uh, takes away uh, from the harsh remit uh, of, you know, the defaulting, uh, uh, you know, related parties to the defaulting entities. 
All right. Thanks very much, Sandeep, for giving us your expert view as to what exactly you're making of the rewriting of the bankruptcy law as well as the new IBC norms, what it would mean in the overall process. Seems like some of the changes would only aid for minor cases and not really bring about a lot of transparency or speed, which was the intention.